Mystery is my hobby. Tonight's story began two days before state election, last fall. Andrew Bradford, gubernatorial candidate on the independent ticket, was concluding a final speech, his final campaign speech, at a rally that was being held for him in the... And in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this. If I am elected governor at the polls next Wednesday, it will be the beginning of a new era of state politics, an era of square dealing and fair play, an era of prosperity and economic advancement. This I give you as my solemn pledge. Thank you. Thanks, darling. Uh, congratulations, Andy. Thanks, George. Nice going, boy. You're as good as in. Well, thank you, Bill. Claudia, where's Dexter? Right here, Mr. Bradford. Ready to go? Yes, I think we'd better. Uh, I'm feeling rather tired. But, Andy, the banquet. The banquet will have to get along without me, I'm afraid. I haven't had any sleep for days. This way, Mr. Bradford. Andy, wait. You can't walk out on all these people. How can I ever face them? Don't face them, darling. Come along home with me. You could use some rest, too. Andy, you can't. Don't you realize... I that... realize that I'm about ready to drop in my tracks. Come along. I should think you'd have more consideration for other people. I should think you'd consider me. I should think you'd realize you can't do this sort of thing. I think it's terrible of you to do this, Andy Bradford. I think Here you're... Here we are. Home. At least wait until we're out of Dexter's hearing, will you? Here we are, Mr. Bradford. Oh, thanks, Dexter. Need me any more tonight, Mr. Bradford? No, no. Go and get some sleep. This campaign hasn't been easy on you, either. Oh, I'm all right. Well, good night, Governor. Good night, Dexter. Thanks. I'll never forgive you for this, Andy. Think to me that you could have at least... Claudia, please. Can't we postpone this until tomorrow? I'm so tired. No, we can't postpone this until tomorrow. You seem to forget that I married you and you were nothing. You seem to forget that... All right, all right. I owe everything to you, and I appreciate it. Only right now... You appreciate it. You expect me to believe that? After the way you treated me tonight? No, I don't expect you to believe it. I was a fool to ever expect you to believe anything I say. Andrew! Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. So that's the way you feel about me? No, Claudia, not really. I'm tired. I'm going to bed, Claudia. You're not going to bed. We're going to have this out right now. Andy! Good night, Claudia. Andrew, come back here. I'll not let you treat me like this. If it weren't for me, you'd be nobody. I'll not... Hello, Andy. What? What's the devil? Nerves jumpy, Andy. Thought you'd have gotten over that by now. Ray. Ray Seaver. Yeah, that's right, Andy. Ray Seaver. And I thought you weren't going to recognize me. Some of the boys said you wouldn't. They're saying that since you've got to be a big shot, you're forgetting a lot of your old friends. Ray, really? when... How did you get her? You mean you ain't her? Why, no. Why, it was simple, Andy. A bunch of us got together one night and persuaded the guard to lend us a couple of Tommy guns. I told you when we were at Joliet together that I... In heaven's name, men, not so loud. Okay, Andy. I forgot you wouldn't want to know you and me were cellmates. Don't either. mention that word. Easy, Andy, easy. Now, don't get excited. You've come a long way, boy, a long way. Andrew Bradford, alias Fritz Carlson, alias Tommy... Bradford, Bradford. you really shut up. I paid my penalty. I've gone straight. Sure you have, Andy, sure you have. From convict to governor, just like in the movies. Shut up, I said. Well, well. So you still pack a gat, huh, Andy? Got a permit, I'll bet. How does it feel to be able to do things legally that in the old days they'd send you up... Get to... out! Get out, or I'll... You know what, Andy? Don't force my hand, Ray. I still know how to use this gun, and I will. Andy, I'm surprised. Think of tomorrow's headlines. Gubernatorial candidate slays old friend. Corpse found in Andrew Bradford's bedroom. <laughs> Ray, you always were a sucker. Who's going to know we were old friends? You fool. When they find out who you are, I'll get a medal for capturing an escaped convict. Wait a minute, Andy. Wait a minute. Didn't I mention that some of the boys came with me when I made that break from Juliet? 
What do you mean? Why, Andy, I'm surprised you ain't caught on. This is big-time stuff. Get to the point, Stephen. Oh, well, that's better. Well, it's like this, Andy. They got things fixed, see? Nothing ain't gonna happen to me because if it does, Charlie Messer, your worthy opponent, is gonna get a letter, see? You rat. What do you want? Well, now we're getting places. It ain't what we want, Andy. It's how much we want. Naturally. I can tell you right now, my resources are limited. But your wife ain't. My wife? Listen, she very few. I told you this was big-time stuff, Andy. We've covered all the angles. Now, it wouldn't be a shame if your wife found out she married an ex-con. Why, you'd be dirty. almost as bad as Charlie Messer knowing about it, wouldn't it? Ray, you... you can't do this to me. It's done, Andy. It's done. It's all wrapped up and ready for delivery. Ray, listen to me. You've got to listen. Oh, sure, Andy. Sure, sure. I got all the time in the world. We're friends once, Ray. Good friends. But I told the boys, Mandy and me, I told them we're just like that. He won't let us down. And I won't, Ray. I swear it. Just don't say anything until after election. Until after election, huh? Yeah. Well, come, Andy. Be reasonable. Our information wouldn't be worth a nickel after you're in. It would, Ray. It would. Ray, I, I'd give you anything you want. Uh, there'd be ways of raising money then. There's ways now. Quit stalling, Bradford. We ain't waiting for nothing, see? We know you can raise the dough, and we ain't listening to any sob story. Pay up or else. How much? Two hundred grand. Two hundred thousand? Are you crazy? I couldn't raise half that amount. Shut up! Two hundred grand is a price, and you're lucky it ain't more. I'm getting out of here. You got two days, Bradford. You bring the dough to... Put down that gun, you fool. Come back, Jerry. Come back and sit down. Keep your hands where I can see them. You can't get away with it, Andy. I always talk... Keep your hand away from that pocket, you crazy fool. I only want to... Oh. Candidate for governor murdered, player escaped. Paint by read all about a big mystery surrounds murder of Andrew Bradford. Get your morning paper at Barton Drake to investigate slaying of Andrew Bradford. Bradford murderer captured by chauffeur Raymond Siva. This candidate wants his cellmate a jolly ass. Uh, Danton speaking. Hello, Inspector. This is Bart. Hello, Bart, my boy. How was he? Not so good, Inspector. Huh? I'd like to have you meet me at the Andrew Bradford place right away. Bradford? Hey, wait a minute, Bob. <laughs> Haven't you heard? That murder's been solved. The solution might have been offered that satisfied the public inspector, but it doesn't satisfy me. Nor does it justify calling an innocent man guilty. Yeah, but look, Bob, all the evidence shows... The evidence that... shows nothing conclusive. I've just come from the Bradford home. Oh, you have? Yes, and I'm going back. I need someone of authority to go with me. Will you come along? Uh, it isn't that I don't want to, but only the investigation is ended. Mine is just beginning. Will you come along? Well, gosh, but... Very well, uh, Inspector. Then I'll have to get someone else. Oh, no, 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 no. Look, no, I didn't... Don't do that. Oh, you'll win. Take me up in your car. Thank you, Inspector. I'll be there in 15 minutes. <laughs> You're crazy to do this, Bart. Ray Seaver isn't innocent. He was already doing a life stretch for one murder. He admits coming to Bradford's room and trying to blackmail him. I'm quite aware of all that, Inspector. Dexter, the chauffeur, made a hero of himself by finding Seaver hiding in the greenhouse. And I'm still convinced Seaver didn't murder Andrew Bradford. I give up. Uh, how do you know? Uh, I'll tell you later. Here we are. Well, uh, uh, look, why not tell me now? If I'm going to stick my chin out, I 
I ought to be in the know. I think it would be a better idea if I show you, Inspector. If it's bad it should be in, I... Well, it's you again, Mr. Drake. I've already told you. Good evening, Mrs. Bradford. I said I'd be coming back. This is Inspector Denton. Hello. Inspector Denton? Mr. Drake, I don't wish to appear rude. But you think there's nothing more I can produce in the way of evidence? Is that it, Mrs. Bradford? I'm positive there isn't. And I'm just as positive there is. I don't want to argue with you, Mr. Drake. I appreciate your taking over the case, but since my husband's murderer has been apprehended... I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradford. Your husband's murderer has not been apprehended. I don't believe I understand... The newspapers... The newspapers, Mrs. Bradford, were merely responding to the public's demand. They have offered nothing conclusive to prove that Ray Seaver murdered your husband. Mr. Drake, aren't you being a bit egotistical? You mean, of course, that my professional reputation has been challenged. Yes. I was called in on this case, and a few hours later, your chauffeur, Dexter, stole the show by capturing the, uh, the alleged murderer in the to greenhouse. Put it, to put it crudely, that's exactly what I mean. And you're quite right, Mrs. Bradford. A man in my profession does have his reputation to think of. I see, Oh, I'm sorry that I can't cater to your professional whim. I'll have to ask you to leave. Which, of course, is your privilege. Well, Inspector. Huh? Hey, what do you mean, well, Inspector? Mrs. Bradford can force me to leave. As a police officer, you can remain. If you're convinced that Ray Seaver's not guilty of the murder of Andrew Bradford. Oh, this is ridiculous. I demand that you both leave. It's up to you, Inspector. Yeah. What a lovely spot it puts me in. Uh, look, Bart. The murderer... And the bullet that killed Andrew Bradford was a thirty-two caliber, Inspector. The gun found in Ray Seaver was a thirty-eight caliber. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean... Of course it doesn't. Seaver could have had two guns. Most gangsters do. He could have disposed of one. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's the way I think of it. There were powder marks on the inside of the bathroom door. Where did those get there? Unless someone fired the shot from behind that door, Inspector. Yeah, but look, Bart. How stupid of you, Mr. Drake. The murderer was standing in the bathroom when he fired the fatal shot. Yeah. I uh, sort of figured it that way, too, Bart. Mm. An empty shell from a thirty-two caliber revolver was found on the ground beneath that window over there, Inspector. Where did it come from? Oh, well, uh, the way I figured Mr. it out... Mr. Drake, it seems to me you're trying desperately to vindicate yourself. The empty shell that you speak of was undoubtedly dropped there by the murderer when he was making his escape. Yeah. Now, uh, that could have happened, you know, Bart. Quite true, Inspector, quite true. But Mrs. Bradford admits hearing three shots. One of them killed her husband. That one, we know, came from a thirty-two caliber revolver. Oh, for goodness sake, Mr. Drake. The other two bullets we found embedded in the walls of this room. One was a thirty-two. the other was a thirty-eight. That's right. But, uh, what's it prove? Possibly nothing. Possibly a great deal. This is nonsense. I demand that both of you leave this house at once. Well, Inspector? Well, Inspector. Hmm. There it is again. Poor me. I'm not tolerate this any longer. You will please leave. Inspector. Okay, Bart. You win. Lady, we are not leaving here until we found out who murdered your husband. And heaven help us if we don't. I hope you're not sore at me. Not at all, Inspector. After all, the evidence does point to Seaver's guilt. It certainly uh, does, Inspector. And besides that, Seaver was already serving a life term. Another murder charge couldn't affect him one way or another. Oh, now, wait a minute, Bart. If you're accusing come, me of... Come, Inspector. Uh, I'm accusing you of nothing. Well, there's the garage. Dexter's room must be uh, in that L over there. You know, this guy Dexter's a tough character. I don't think he's going to want to answer any more questions. Frankly, Inspector, I don't expect much cooperation from anyone. Oh. Huh. I suppose that's a crack at me. Now, look, Bart, I... I... <laughs> I'm sorry, Inspector. Suppose we forget about it, hmm? Yeah, here we are. Looks like he isn't in. Uh, on the contrary, I think he's merely being stubborn. Yeah? Well, I'll take care of that. Hey, open up in there. Oh, so it's you again. Look, when are you two going to stop playing cops and robbers and go home? That'll be enough out of you. Come on in, Bart. If Junior wants to play rough, we'll help him out. Now, wait a minute. You can't yes, come in here. Yes, we can, too. Get over there and sit down. That's better. 
Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Inspector. Dexter, we're working on a theory that Ray Seaver didn't murder your boss. What am I supposed to do? Break down and confess that I shot the old man? That would certainly simplify things, wouldn't it? You're crazy, Drake. As plain as a nose on your face. Why don't you get wise to yourself and go home and write your book? Because I pride myself in putting accurate facts in those books, my friend. And if I stated that Ray Seaver murdered Andrew Bradford, it would be inaccurate. Ah, nuts. You're sore because I stole your thunder. You just can't take it if you're not in the limelight, can you, Drake? That's it, Dexter. I can't take it. Now I want you to show me the ladder that you found leaning against the house beneath Mr. Bradford's window. Show it to you. Mm-hmm. Look, Drake, if you think Show that... it to him, Junior. Take it easy, copper. You can't make me do anything I don't want to do. Is that right? All we can do is take you down to headquarters and have some of the boys sweat it out of you. Sweat what out of me? What is this, anyhow? I've told you all I know. No, you haven't, Dexter. You've only told us part of what you know, and only a fraction of that is correct. Who says so? I do, and I can prove it. You see? Now, wait a minute. Are you saying you can prove there wasn't a ladder leaning against the house? No, no, no. That part of your statement is quite true. There was a ladder leaning against the house. There were imprints in the flower bed beneath the window to substantiate the fact. Well, then? That's probably also true that you heard the shot and ran outside. But when you say that you saw Ray Seaver coming down that ladder, you're lying. Oh, am I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drake, you killed me. So you're going to prove that I went up the ladder and shot Bradford, huh? No, no, I don't think that's what happened at all. Dexter, exactly what did you do when you saw Seaver coming down that ladder? I've already told what I did a hundred times. Now, well, look. you're going to tell it a hundred more. If we want to hear it, what you do? Okay. I ran after him. He had a gun. He took a shot at me. So I ducked in the house and called the cops. That's all. Not quite all, Dexter. Who removed the ladder from the side of the house? I did. The cops told me to. That's how I happened to find Seaver. Well, that part's right, boss. The uh, ladder belonged in the greenhouse. And uh, when Dexter here went to put it back, and there was Seaver sound asleep. Yeah, that's it. He was sound asleep. He'd been there for two days trying to keep awake. Couldn't take it any longer. That makes sense, boss. It was kind of clever, a fever at that, to hide on the grounds instead of trying to escape us. Everyone would think he'd do. Mm, it was clever, Inspector. Too clever to hide in the very place from which he'd stolen the ladder. Don't you suppose it occurred to him that the ladder would be returned? Say, maybe that's something to think about. Oh, nuts. If that's all you've got to go Please on... There's considerable more to go on, Dexter. <laughs> all right, let's go have a look at that ladder. <laughs> Mighty deduction that you're going to spring now, Drake? Mm, Dexter, I'm not quite sure yet. Oh. Yes, this is a ladder, all right. The dried mud on the wide end where it sank into the flower bed beneath Bradford's window. Now, ain't that wonderful? Pipe down, Junior. What now, Bob? A little experiment, Inspector. Grab one end of the ladder. I'll take the other. Come along, Dexter. Hey, where are we going to take this thing, Bud? Over to the house. I want Dexter to show us exactly where it was when he saw Seaver making his uh, escape. Oh, for crying out loud. You already said you knew the ladder was there because you saw the imprints of it in the dirt. Yes, Mrs. Vanson. Yes, I rather expected she'd want to witness this. Mr. Frank, I want you to know that I've contacted the state house and Governor Johnson has promised to put a stop to this nonsense. Governor Johnson was a friend of your husband, wasn't he, Mrs. Bradford? I suppose he felt that doing you a favor would be a nice gesture. I don't like your implication, Mr. Drake. Dexter, return to your room. Yes, ma'am. Hey, stay here, Junior. Sorry, Mrs. Bradford. Dexter's going to help us conduct a, a little experiment. He's not. I forbid it. It won't do any good, lady, but a stubborn guy. Please stay, Mrs. Bradford. I'm sure that what we're about to do will prove most interesting. I'll not stay. You're both of you crude and discourteous. You're acting like children. You have no respect for a widow's sorrow. I'm going to the house to call someone. I won't have this sort of thing. Think she's mad? Mm, mad. That's clever. All right, Inspector. Up with the ladder. Yeah. Careful now. I want those points in exactly the same imprints that were made in the flower bed when the ladder was up here before. Yeah. All right, there we are. Reaches right up to the upstairs bedroom window. Yes. All right, Dexter. Up you go. What do you mean, up I go? I want you to climb the ladder and show me just how Seaver looked when he made his escape. Are you crazy? What kind of kid stuff is it? You'll see. Unless you're afraid. Afraid? Of what? Get out of the way. I'll show you. Splendid. When you get to the top, start down as fast as you can. Well, Dexter? Hey, he stopped halfway up. Keep going, Dexter. Hey, I get it. He can't keep going. 
If he goes up any further, he'll fall over backwards. That's right, Inspector. That ladder was placed so close to the house that it would have been impossible for anyone to climb up or down it. Jump, St. Judas. Then that means that Seaver couldn't have. But who put the ladder there and why? Why, Inspector, Dexter put it there. Didn't you, Dexter? You put it there to corroborate your story because you knew... <laughs> Yeah, from one of the upstairs windows. Up on the porch, Inspector. Yeah, yeah there, there's the door and it's open. Come on. No, 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 wait. Huh? That door is open for a purpose. Huh? Follow me. Let's try this window. Yeah. It's locked. Well, shall we bust it in? Yes, tap the glass with your gun, Inspector, then reach in and open the latch. Okay. That does it. Good work. Now we'll just raise the window. Okay, Inspector. Let's get inside. Yep. Careful, Inspector. We don't want to have to shoot Mrs. Bradford if it can be helped. Mrs. Bradford? Yes. She will shop Dexter. Huh? Now, that door there probably leads to the kitchen. We can get up the back way. Yeah. I'll just open it in if you like it. Oops. All right, you two, get your hands up. Well, Mrs. Bradford, you handle that gun quite well. I'm an expert, Drake. Keep that in mind. I have no doubt about you being an expert, and rather a cold-blooded expert. Two murders to your credit, and... and... now two more, you and Danton. Is that what you're thinking, Drake? Well, it stands to reason. But you can't be executed any more thoroughly for four murders than you could for one. You're a cool one, Drake. Yeah, well, I'm not. I, uh, I'm hot. Uh, lady, would you mind pointing that gun toward the ceiling? It might go off. It's going off, my friend, and it's not going to be pointing toward the ceiling when it does. Yeah. I was afraid that's what you'd say. But first, you want to know how I happen to suspect you of murdering your husband. Is that it, Mrs. Bradford? I don't believe you did suspect me. I think you suspected Dexter. That's right, Mrs. Bradford. And until you saw Dexter trying to climb that ladder, you weren't sure whether or not I had any grounds for my suspicion. I don't get this. If the lady here knew you suspected Dexter, what did she shoot him for? That's what I call sticking your chin up. I'll tell you why she shot Dexter, Inspector. Both Bradford and Dexter overheard the conversation between Andrew Bradford and Ray Seaver. And Mrs. Bradford was standing in the bathroom between her room and her husband. Dexter was outside in the hall. Neither one knew of the other's presence. That's right, isn't it, Mrs. Bradford? Go on, Drake. You both decided that Seaver had to be eliminated. You both opened your doors and shot at the exact moment that Seaver and Bradford came to grips. One of you missed. The other hit Bradford by mistake. So that's it. Dexter and Mrs. Bradford got a gander at each other. Both were guilty. They made a pact to pin the murder on Seaver because he was doing a life sentence anyway. That's it, Inspector. So naturally, when I found the flaw in Dexter's story, Mrs. Bradford had to eliminate Dexter because she knew he'd talk in order to protect himself. And look out, Inspector! I'm looking at this chair on the toilet! Ah! What the deuce are you doing with that notebook and pencil? Hmm? Oh, just jotting down a few notes, Inspector. About the Bradford case, huh? Yes, that's right, Inspector. Maybe you got it figured out why Bradford's wife and Dexter both decided to shoot Seaver. Oh, I had that figured out long ago, Inspector. Yeah? Mrs. Bradford certainly didn't want it known that she'd married an ex-convict, and Dexter figured there'd be a reward for capturing Seaver. I see. Uh, you gonna write all about that in your book? Certainly. After that crack that Dexter made, I've got to be more careful than ever to get my facts straight. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of this book going to be, Bart? Well, Inspector, what other name could it possibly be than Mystery is My Hobby? Ah! 